Welcome to ASO Red, where I provide online businesses and expatriates with insights, news, and training on a broad range of business matters. My name is Sean. Let's jump in. Hello, everyone. Today, we will be discussing the topic of handling IP right infringements in the metaverse and the hurdles that must be overcome. Let's begin with our overview, which will guide us through the presentation. We will start by examining the categories of infringement in the metaverse followed by the challenges of identifying an infringer. Then, we will explore the available procedures to prevent infringement, both on metaverses built on the blockchain and those that are not. Next, we will discuss the challenges of going to court for IP right infringement in the metaverse and conclude with the significance of seeking assistance from IP right specialists. Now let's move on to our first slide, where we will be discussing the categories of infringement in the metaverse. To start, let's take a look. What are the categories of infringement in the metaverse? The metaverse is comprised of two categories of infringement. The first is a virtual copy of a physical item, such as a virtual MacBook or Eames Classic Chair. The second category is virtual content linked to an NFT, which are digital files that can be sold as unique items. All right, but what are the challenges of identifying an infringer in the metaverse? Identifying an infringer in the metaverse can be challenging due to privacy concerns. For Category 2 infringements, the blockchain contains all the information needed. However, for Category 1 infringements, where a virtual copy of a physical item is created, a distinction must be made between metaverses built on the blockchain and those that are not. This is where identifying an infringer can become difficult. This brings us to how do IP right owners navigate available procedures to prevent infringement. Metaverses not on blockchain have the discretion to remove content that violates their terms of service. Metaverses on blockchain, on the other hand, are governed and managed by decentralized autonomous organizations through a voting system. There is a double threshold hurdle for getting infringing content removed in these metaverses. This means that IP right owners must gather enough votes to represent the total number of voters and achieve a majority vote. Now we need to understand, what are the challenges of going to court for IP right infringement in the metaverse? Going to court may be the only remaining option for some IP right owners. However, the court may look to whether the metaverse aimed its content and activity toward the forum state to determine whether it has jurisdiction. This can be a challenge as any metaverse can be accessed from anywhere in the world. IP right owners may have to introduce a procedure in a forum and with a court that is favorable to them. Okay, so what is the significance of seeking assistance from IP right specialists then? The law limps behind technology, which moves much quicker. Accidents may happen in the emerging reality of the metaverse. IP right specialists can help take proactive or retroactive steps against IP right infringements. Seeking assistance from these specialists can help navigate the challenges and take proactive or retroactive steps against infringement. In conclusion, we can sum up that the metaverse is an emerging reality that presents challenges and hurdles for IP right owners. It is important to seek assistance from IP right specialists to navigate these challenges and take proactive or retroactive steps against infringement. With the law limping behind technology, accidents may happen. However, with the right expertise and guidance, IP right owners can effectively protect their rights in the metaverse. All right, we're done here. Thank you for joining me today. If you have any questions or would like to learn more about how ASO Red can help you, please don't hesitate to get in touch. Thanks again for your time, and have a great day.